Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Thursday, March 28, 2024. The year is 2003. Our main topic, invasion of Iraq, in a friendly fire incident, two members of the United States Air Force attacked the United Kingdom's Blues and Royals Regiment, killing one soldier and injuring five. On March 28, 2003, during the invasion of Iraq, a tragic friendly fire incident occurred between the United States Air Force and the United Kingdom's Blues and Royals Regiment. Two USAF A-10 Thunderbolt II ground attack aircraft mistakenly fired on two Blues and Royals armored vehicles, resulting in the death of one British soldier and injuring five others. The incident took place during the 26 days of major combat operations in which a combined force of troops from the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Poland invaded Iraq. The USAF attends were providing close air support to coalition ground troops when they mistakenly identified the Blues and Royals vehicles as hostile targets. The friendly fire incident was a sobering reminder of the risks and complexities of military operations, particularly when coalition forces are involved. It highlighted the need for robust communication and coordination protocols to prevent such incidents from occurring in the future. The invasion of Iraq was a significant event in modern military history, marking the beginning of a protracted conflict that would last for nearly a decade. The incident involving the Blues and Royals in the USAF serves as a reminder of the human cost of war and the importance of honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. The incident also underscores the importance of strong alliances and cooperation between nations, particularly in the context of military operations. The fact that coalition forces were able to work together to quickly address the incident and prevent further harm is a testament to the strength of these relationships. In conclusion, the friendly fire incident between the USAF and the Blues and Royals during the invasion of Iraq was a tragic reminder of the risks and complexities of military operations. It highlighted the need for robust communication and coordination protocols and served as a reminder of the human cost of war. Despite the incident, the strength of the alliance between the United States and the United Kingdom remained strong, and the two nations continued to work together to achieve their shared goals in Iraq. The year is 1809. On the news, Peninsular War, France defeats Spain in the Battle of Maidane. In a pivotal moment of the Peninsular War, French forces emerged victorious against the Spanish army in the Battle of Maidane on March 28, 1809. Led by Marshal Victor, the French army secured a significant victory against their Spanish counterparts, who were under the command of General Don Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta. This battle marked a crucial step in the French occupation of southern Spain, which would ultimately be solidified later that year with the victory at the Battle of Acaña. Context, the Peninsular War was a far-reaching conflict that engulfed the Iberian Peninsula from 1807 to 1814. It was part of the larger Napoleonic Wars, which saw France, under the leadership of Napoleon Bonaparte, seek to expand its empire across Europe. Spain, Portugal, and the United Kingdom formed an alliance to resist the French invasion and protect their sovereignty. The war was not only a struggle for territorial control but also a defining moment in the history of Spain, as it overlapped with the Spanish War of Independence. Historical significance, the Battle of Maidane was a turning point in the Peninsular War, as it marked the first major French victory in southern Spain. The French army's success in this battle paved the way for their continued advancement in the region and set the stage for the eventual French occupation of Spain. The battle was a significant milestone in the larger conflict, as it showcased the military prowess of the French army and highlighted the challenges faced by the Spanish forces in their fight for independence. In conclusion, the Battle of Maidane was a critical moment in the Peninsular War, marking a decisive French victory and a significant step in their occupation of southern Spain. It was a turning point in the conflict, with far-reaching implications for the future of Spain and the region. 
Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, Priscus. The Christian Feast Day of Priscus is a day of celebration and remembrance of the life and martyrdom of St. Priscus, one of several Catholic saints and martyrs. The exact date of the feast day varies depending on the denomination and tradition, but it is typically observed in the early months of the year. The cultural significance of the holiday lies in its commemoration of the sacrifices and devotion of St. Priscus, who gave his life for his faith and beliefs. His story serves as a reminder of the importance of standing by one's convictions and values, even in the face of adversity and persecution. The holiday is observed by Christians around the world through various rituals and traditions, such as attending church services, participating in processions, and engaging in acts of charity and service. It is also a time for reflection and contemplation, as believers reflect on the example set by St. Priscus and seek to emulate his courage and devotion in their own lives. Overall, the Christian Feast Day of Priscus is a significant holiday that serves as a reminder of the power of faith and the importance of standing by one's beliefs, even in the face of adversity. It is a day of celebration, reflection, and service, and it holds great cultural and spiritual significance for Christians around the world. On this day, in 1945, Rodrigo Duterte, Filipino politician, 16th President of the Philippines, was born. Rodrigo Duterte, also known as Digong, Rodi, and by the initials DU30 and PRRD, is a Filipino lawyer and politician who served as the 16th President of the Philippines from 2016 to 2022. He is the chairperson of PDP Laban, the ruling political party in the Philippines during his presidency. Duterte is the first president of the Philippines to be from Mindanao and is the oldest person to assume office, beginning his term at age 71. Duterte's political career began in 1988 when he was elected mayor of Davao City, a position he held for 22 years. During his tenure, he implemented policies that helped reduce crime and improve the city's infrastructure. He also implemented a controversial anti-drug campaign that resulted in the deaths of thousands of people. In 2016, Duterte ran for president and won, defeating four other candidates. During his presidency, he implemented policies that aimed to reduce crime, improve the economy, and promote infrastructure development. He also pursued an independent foreign policy, seeking to distance the Philippines from its traditional ally, the United States, and forging closer ties with China and Russia. Duterte's presidency was marked by controversy, including his administration's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which was criticized for being slow and inadequate. He also faced criticism for his handling of the war on drugs, which resulted in the deaths of thousands of people, and for his attacks on the media and political opponents. Despite the controversies, Duterte remained popular with many Filipinos, who saw him as a strong leader who was willing to take bold action to address the country's problems. He was also praised for his efforts to promote economic development and improve the country's infrastructure. In conclusion, Rodrigo Duterte's presidency was marked by both controversy and achievement. While his policies and actions were criticized by many, he remained popular with a significant segment of the Filipino population. His legacy continues to be debated and evaluated by historians and political analysts. We remember the life of Ordilf, Duke of Saxony, who died on this date in 1072. Ordilf, Duke of Saxony, was a prominent figure in 11th century Germany. As a member of the Belung family, he was born into a powerful dynasty that had played a significant role in shaping the country's history. Ordilf succeeded his father, Bernard II, as the Duke of Saxony in 1059 and ruled until his death. During his tenure, he worked tirelessly to strengthen the duchy and promote its interests. One of Ordilf's most notable achievements was his military campaigns against the Slavs and the Danes. He led several successful battles, expanding the duchy's territory and securing its borders. His military prowess earned him great respect among his peers and solidified his position as a powerful leader. In addition to his military accomplishments, Ordilf was also known for his administrative skills. He implemented a number of reforms aimed at strengthening the duchy's infrastructure and improving the lives of his subjects. He promoted trade and commerce, encouraging the growth of towns and cities, and invested in the construction of roads and bridges. Ordilf's reign was not without challenges, however. He faced opposition from the church and other powerful nobles, who resented his growing power and influence. 
Despite these challenges, he remained steadfast in his commitment to his people and his duchy, always putting their interests above his own. In his personal life, Ordilf was known for his piety and generosity. He was a generous patron of the arts and religion, supporting the construction of several monasteries and churches. He was also a devoted husband and father, and his family was known for their philanthropy and kindness. In conclusion, Ordilf, Duke of Saxony, was a remarkable leader who left a lasting impact on the history of Germany. His military accomplishments, administrative reforms, and commitment to his people make him a figure worthy of remembrance and admiration. His legacy continues to inspire future generations, and his contributions to the Duchy of Saxony remain a testament to his greatness. This was Today in History, an AIA podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.